Dear Peter, thank you. Uh, it's a great honor to see you here to uh, visit your house. And uh, I would like to speak um, about Omanal Pratsak. Uh, I would like to ask you what do you remember about him? What do you remember about your cooperation? Maybe you can say a few words about Ukrainian Jewish relations of that time. Well, all right, that's uh, one. I'm delighted to have you uh, as a guest in my house. Uh, I knew about uh, Omelian Pritzak um, from his work. Uh, I would say, well, I was a graduate student, so in, in the early 60s, mid 60s, I was already familiar with uh, very fundamental works that he had written uh, on Turkological subjects. On the, the Bulgarian prince list and, and the Karakhanids, which had been the subject of his doctoral dissertation. Um, he was also a good friend of um, my mentor in, te in Turkology, Tibor Halashiku. And they uh, frequently met and exchanged ideas and so on. Um, and uh, through Tibor, I I got to know uh, Omelian Pritzak. Um, we first actually met, it was uh, as I was finishing up my, my dissertation, and I had just come back from, from uh, more than a year of study in, in, in Turkey. Um, uh, I had gone up to, uh, my wife and I had gone up to uh, see friends in Providence, Rhode Island, and arranged that I would go to, to meet uh, with Omila. Um, and I took the train. Uh, I didn't have a car in those days. Uh, I took the train from Providence to a point that was midway on Route 128 uh, on the way to his house, and he met me at the train station um, and then drove me uh, in his inimitable uh, driving style, which was uh, it was a real yuchach uh, <laughs> of the first order, and uh, um, uh, we discussed the whole time there, uh, the whole time driving there, uh, discussed a whole range of Turkological questions, uh, and I was already deeply impressed by by his books by the breadth of his knowledge and in the course of our discussions that, uh, that appreciation of him only uh, increased. Uh, we sat in his study, uh, in his home, which was also a library with thousands upon thousands of books arranged in library style in, in long stacks. It was uh, one of the greatest uh, collections of <laughs> of works on uh, orientalistica um, uh, that I had ever uh, encountered. Uh, uh, and he, he, he ranged effortlessly uh, across uh, the whole of Eurasia. Uh, was at home in a, an enormous variety of sources from old Icelandic uh, sagas to, to Chinese uh, accounts of the Turks, and of course his, his Arabic was excellent, his Persian was excellent, he knew all the Turkic languages, um, and so on. Uh, so it, it was very hard to surprise uh, Omelian with something <laughs> that he had not already encountered. Uh, uh, but he was always very gracious uh, and always very, very willing to share um, his knowledge, uh, to uh, to encourage uh, younger scholars. Um, um, he was not directly my teacher, but I always felt that I learned a great deal from him as a, as, as a kind of a mentor. Uh, 
and uh, was uh, deeply appreciative of that. Um, we participated in a number of conferences uh, together. Uh, the first one that I can recall uh, well was um, held in Banff in Canada, uh, a place I'd never heard of before. It's outside of Calgary, it's uh, up in the Canadian Rockies, and I wondered why ever did they have a conference in this place. And of course, once we arrived there and saw its incredible natural beauty, uh, it became clear why, why this international Slavic conference um, uh, was being held there. Uh, and so we all stayed in the same hotel and we spent a lot of time together. We ate together, went out, um, uh, walking around, uh, Omelian, uh, myself, uh, and uh, Tibor Holoshikun. Um, I forget whether uh, Yaroslav Polensky may have been with us. Uh, I don't recall precisely. But um, we, you know, uh, again, walking around the town, talking. Uh, about everything from from the high tree level of of, uh, of the mountains, which is very unusual, uh, uh, not like anything in Europe, where the tree level usually doesn't go up that high, uh, to obscure points of Turkology. Uh, so, uh, with Omelian, things were never dull. Uh, he was always, he had some you know, new interests, some new information to convey uh, and was interested in new kinds of material. Uh, so he had a very broad conception uh, of the work that he did. Then of course, um, uh, when he came to Harvard, uh, or he was already at, actually at, at Harvard by that time, uh, he uh, really started uh, a whole new area there, in, namely Ukrainian studies, founding the, uh, the Ukrainian uh, Research Institute, um, along with Ihor Shuchenko, someone with whom I also studied. Uh, and uh, uh, I was astounded at uh, how much they were able to accomplish and so rapidly, so that the center uh, moved up, the institute became a an important center of, 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 of Ukrainian studies. Uh, but Ukrainian studies conceived very broadly. Um, as the journal uh, that they produced, uh, Harvard Ukrainian Studies, um, indicates if you go through, uh, uh, especially the earlier uh, uh, copies, uh, earlier volumes, um, it is uh, broadly Eurasian in its, in its conception. Um, it is not in any way narrowly national, but very, very internationally minded, seeing uh, Ukraine as part of a larger Eurasian context. And uh, in order to understand uh, many elements of Ukrainian history, uh, he uh, believed, and he expressed it in his writings, you needed to know the surrounding cultures and the interaction with these cultures. Um, and of course he was someone who was uh, perfectly situated to do uh, just that, given his, his knowledge of, of Eastern languages, uh, uh, the Turkic world um, in particular, uh, with which the, the, the old Rus state had uh, such deep interactions. Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, we constantly discussed uh, those things. We also discussed uh, his projected, at that time, five-volume work on the origins of the Rus, uh, which regrettably is not, was never completed. Uh, uh, we, many of us were waiting for the volume, and he always said in, in the earlier volume, I will deal with this in volume <laughs> X, and was, all right, we're waiting for this volume to come out. Uh, because it will it will answer all of our questions. Uh, uh, so uh, unfortunately, it didn't it didn't come out. Um, over time, I uh, as I moved from an interest in Khazar studies, which I still have, but uh, moved on into other areas like the Kupchak world, one that uh, also Omelian 
was uh, very much interested in. Um, uh, we a lot of our discussions uh, focused on on that world. Um, and at one point, this was already much later in his in his career. He said, "You know, maybe I'll just give you my my uh, Kupchak material. I don't know that I'll ever get to finish it, and you know, you're you're." Welcome to it. It, 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 it didn't uh, come to pass, but you know he was he was thinking in those terms, so that uh, uh, there would be someone that would 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 would, would carry on. Uh, outside of Eastern Europe, there are very few of us working in this area, uh, and Omelian was the doyen, the, the the dean of 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 those doing this kind of work. Um, namely this uh, Eurasian studies with a focus on the Slavic world, the Eastern Slavic world in particular, and the Turkic world, and then uh, the larger Uralic and other uh, Iranian and other groupings. Um, uh, and uh, I, have, I have fears about it, <laughs> uh, at least as, as far as the U.S. is concerned, and that uh, I don't know that there's anyone in the younger generation that is that is uh, going to uh, carry this forward. Um, hopefully someone will show up. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but the thing that I think struck me most about uh, Melian was his, uh, his wonderful curiosity. Uh, I think every scholar has to have that. It's, it's almost a childlike curiosity. Uh, the desire to to find out something new, to see something new. Um, and he was constantly refocusing uh, in light of new data coming in. He was constantly refocusing and refining. This was a, a, a steady process of refining, uh, finer nuances uh, in, in his understanding of, of these questions. Uh, he was amazingly prolific. Uh, writing in in uh, in German, in uh, English, in Ukrainian, um, uh, some things, in, a few articles in Turkish, um, and uh, at least those are the, the ones that, that that I'm aware of. There are probably other other things that appeared in other languages uh, that I don't know of. Uh, but a new publication from Elian was always. Uh, warmly greeted uh, because you'd learn something new. You'd gain a new perspective. Um, and he had ways of, of, of uh, digging out unusual, hitherto unknown aspects uh, of an issue. Um, so that's, you know, that's, uh, that's what I remember uh, most about him. Uh, he was a very kindly man, a very warm man, uh, a scholar of the utmost uh, probity and, uh, and integrity, uh, and one who was interested in, in expanding uh, horizons. Uh, he was, uh, I would say, an important figure in addition in the development of a Ukrainian Jewish dialogue in the United States, um, and he he warmly welcomed it. He contributed to it. Um, he was involved in, in conferences that dealt with it. Um, uh, elements of it, his interest in the Khazars, for example, uh, 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 touched on uh, on uh, these themes, uh, and that was it. Was not just. Uh, of interest uh, in terms of scholarship, it was interest uh, of interest in terms of of larger human questions, uh, some of the most difficult human questions of of the modern era, um, and Omelian was looking to shed light on it uh, and to expand people's consciousness uh, about it. So, um, I had uh, enormous respect for him as. Uh, as a scholar um, and as a human being, and great affection for him uh, as a human being. He was uh, 
he was just a, a wonderful person to know. Since you heard of the specialists in the field of Hazar studies, um, what can you say about his work on that? Um, he had um, numerous publications yes. on this issue and also, as we know, he published the book um, yes. on the Kievan letter yes. uh, together with Norman Gulp. Yes. Yeah, that was a major, major contribution. Here again, he brought this, this vast erudition that he had uh, to trying, uh, in, a, in an attempt to, to uh, unravel the mysteries of this letter, uh, the mysteries uh, behind the names of the signatories of the famous Kievan letter. Um, a, an issue that I might add is by no means resolved. Uh, there are lots of, of different schools of thought about this. But uh, Omidyan began the dialogue, and that was important. He presented the material, he began the dialogue, uh, and he indicated certain, uh, certain roads, certain paths that could be followed. Uh, so that uh, was, I think, uh, uh, an extremely important contribution. Uh, and again, it was not just the philological work, but the larger historical uh, context in which uh, he set uh, he set the letter um, and uh, the early history of uh, Rus, as is reflected in a part of the uh, Khazar Hebrew correspondence. Uh, uh, not everyone agreed with 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 some of his theories, um, uh, and uh, that never bothered him. He never took it as an affront. Uh, this was an ongoing dialogue. Uh, that uh, that uh, we would all be having, um, and uh, reasonable people could reasonably disagree um, and offer uh, their own presentations. And he was he never dismissed anything uh, cavalierly. Uh, so I think um, uh, the work he did there, the work he the article that he wrote about uh, the uh, conversion of, of the Khazars uh, are fundamental works in, in Khazar studies. Um, and it, you can't begin to, uh, to really work with the field without making reference to them. Thank you so much. My pleasure.